so this is probably going to be my last deck guide of the season because we're pushing towards the end of 10.6. The Gwent opens are later on today that I look forward to watching. So I'm going to be putting some time into that. And when that's over with, I want to get settled on doing a video for all the new cards, talking about my meta predictions, talking about possible ways that we could play these cards and obviously reviewing them as well. I want to look out for the patch notes and do a video on the patch notes so that we can keep up to date so that we know everything we need to know before we drop in the new season on Tuesday. And I want to do something that I've been meaning to publish um, as part of the fantasy expansion that we do in the Discord server. I want to show you guys what the community's come up with over the last month for new cards. So there's that. And then if I have enough time, then maybe, maybe I'll do a variety game or variety video just because I know when the new season comes, we're going to be no life in Gwent for the, like, I don't even know if we're going to sleep the first week. So, um, you know, give myself a little bit of break to play something else for one day before we hop into the real, you know, 10.7 or 11.0, whatever it's going to be. So this deck is honestly one of the more fun decks that I played this season. So much fun. And the reason why is because we take Rune Mage early on, and then we have so many good possibilities to roll off the Bountiful Harvests, and it doesn't really have that same RNG aspect that it used to. Now it just feels pretty certain that we're going to be taking this to get this, and then, you know, do it again and again and again. And this is extremely greedy. However, I've been able to get this up to. 2462, 2470 MMR, not quite my peak, but in around somewhere like that. So if you're looking to get to pro rank, I don't think you'll have a problem. If you're looking to climb in pro rank, I think that you'll do well in some matchups, but there are some that it's horrendous. So Nilfgaard Assimilate has a field day against us because they love Simlas, they love Bountiful Harvest, and they love Rune Mage. So that's one to look out for. The Nilfgaard Siege matchup could be kind of bad too because we have a lot of things that we want to greed or float on the board. And if these are answered, it's a problem, right? But there are definitely some matchups that you'll like. Monsters, other Nilfgaard besides Assimilate. Again, just things that are not super control heavy. So we'll get into the deck here a little bit. This one's a non-Devotion Nature's Gift deck. Usually when you're running Nature's Gift, you're actually running Devotion because you want to get the benefit and the payoff from Ethne, when she transforms into Ethne Wrath of, Wrath of Broccolon, and you get Symbiosis 3, which is crazy because that combined with Symbiosis 1 from Leader and whatever other, you know, Symbiosis you have on the board could get some really good point treants. Now... Again, this is a different strategy. So basically here, O'Neill will make sure that we get the cards that we need. What we're looking to do is we can either play a couple Bountiful Harvests early on and cycle them back into our deck with Alyssa and then play two more later. That's the more conservative option. Otherwise, we can go and we can create two Bountiful Harvests off the Sorceresses early on, play them, shuffle them both back into deck and if we're lucky enough in round three we can take simlas and play four bountiful harvests at the same time and if we played room mage first we'd obviously have the choice of five instead of three different choices there so then we would try to roll more sorceresses to go and just get more and more and more so you can imagine how much hand buff we'd get there's consideration to play around hand buff with this, but I don't think it's worth it because, you know, we want to make sure the combo works. And this just feels like the most consistent version that I put together. Now, obviously, last play Gord Finisher is going to be great because if Gord has a bunch of boost on him from a million Bountiful Harvests and Dunkas and all that stuff we're playing. Plus, you've got the specials that we played. We have so many ways to get specials. He's guaranteed in every game that I've played to get that maximum boost of self, uh, 12 for self. So 15 is the minimum. The ceiling is however many hand buffs you have on Gord. So it's a really good finisher in a short round three, right? Um, again, if depending on the play, we have the ability to just use one of the natures from our grave and use a protector for that. So let's say in a matchup where 
we don't have the luxury of making two bountifuls to put them back and get the full four. Let's say we only have one there and we don't really feel like in this matchup we want to do all that effort of just putting back one with Alyssa. Maybe it's worth it to just go and get like a double heat wave or something like that and play the one from Grave with Force Protector and just use it that way. So that's kind of the way that I take it sometimes depending on how much control we need, depending on what we're expecting from our opponents. So there's that. Call the Force just makes a lot of sense because everything in this deck can be tutored by it as far as Squaytail units with exception to these two cards. So these would be Onero targets. Everything else could be a Call of the Forest target. I like it because the nature uh, synergizes with Symbiosis. So it's this instead of Decree for that reason, right? Plus the extra boost is kind of nice for keeping things like the Sorceress alive. Let's say we tutor out a Sorceress and we used one leader charge the next turn. It'll be six power puts it in a great spot for Bountiful Harvest, whereas it would take two turns if I had a Decree, for example. So that's kind of the idea here. Dunka, again, just for hand buffs. You can use it for utility. Uh, three damage, you know, being held on order, plus whatever we roll off the Harvest could be enough to complete a kill on something. So that's kind of the idea there. Uh, rebukes, again, really good value here. We're spawning a lot of Treants. We're boosting these Treants uh, with Death Blows. So I like that little control. Um, Hamadryad just for Symbiosis, because I don't really want to have just one point trees in every matchup. It's kind of nice to have some cards that benefit from the leader charges besides this and this, you know. At least these can go, and these get quite tall. However, these being tall is actually not a horrible thing, because we do play around the common matchup of Ornate Sensor. And seeing a lot of this go around the season, we have a lot of one and two point spawns. Now, if this is worth 15, 20 points, we can often just, you know, they use this, it converts the power from this to something on our side of the playing field. So it actually maybe could be a one point turn for them if we get teched against with that. So I kind of like that interaction there. I have Vile for the Thin and the information to understand what I'm playing into with my opponents so that I know how to sequence my greedy engines. That's basically it. Another thing is that if they don't have Vile, we have a really good way to keep one, two, or three alive. We float this, we play it. I know the turn's very slow, but the payoff turn, the following turn, is extremely fast. It's a huge tempo play. So uh, oftentimes opponent will underestimate it and it'll just come out swinging. So I really like this Vile. Place for 12 points if played onto a Hamadryad. So you, this is just the stuff you don't get in Devotion. And it's tons of fun, right? Vile off Sorceress immediately puts Sorceress at Bountiful Harvest spawn with Rune Mage. So really cool interactions with that there. Tempering just to keep things alive. Similar way to the the Vile here. Squirrel to tech against a Melusine. An Echo card or anything that we deem a threat. And then... Yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, Elven Seer obviously makes a copy of a Bronze Special when targeted with it, so we can make copies of basically either of these ones here. And just... I would try to go for the Caress. Basically make a copy of Caress, then put the second one on the Hamadryad. That's the most points. Sometimes you'll just take Tempering for a value play, especially if you have to boost up these if they've been damaged by like a Waylay or something like that. Really easy to just hammer off one of these onto this, onto this, you see what I mean? And just chain it. So pretty cool. I'm going to show you the more control version. I'll put both of these ones in here because maybe some people are like, man, that's so damn greedy. You can't play that. Um, I took the Elven Sears out here because I understand that some matchups will be frustrating, right? I put a Maren in there because maybe you'd rather lock something and just prevent it from actually happening, opposed to having a super greedy play. Obviously, this deck doesn't have as many points, I know that, but this is the control one, so it is what it is. Um, I like Maren. It has utility, right? Versus taking a Direg Array. This is six points with a lock. This is five with a lock or seven without lock if we don't need the lock. So it has a higher ceiling. You can put this in if you want. Uh, you can put this in if you want. I decided to go for a separate movement tech because there's not a lot in the bronze end that I wanted to go for. So this is in the event and we need a unit here. I didn't want to go for offensive purify because us pushing something is pretty much the same thing and not many people are playing resilience right now. Um, 
I just feel like the movement tech's great. If something's Roblox, like Siege, Caraballista, uh, Freak Show, for example, in Syndicate, you could push it. If I have to get around a Defender to heat with a Melusine or something like that, you know, we can't roll a Purify off a Bountiful. It's just easier to do this right away. So I have it for that reason, right? And I'm pretty happy with that. But again, it could be switched for something you think is more important. Like you could take Doomed or Veil. I don't think Veil's really the, the play to go here, but you know what I mean? You can, honestly, it's not really a big deal, but I just like that little tech. So this is this version here. I did have a higher win rate with the greedier version because I found if this deck was going to lose, it was going to lose. If it was going to win, it was going to win in most cases. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you're looking for something to jam over the last couple days of the season, whether it's casually or competitively, I definitely recommend giving this one a try. Tons of fun. And this just is such a fun card. I think this is my favorite card that they gave during that latest expansion. So I'm looking forward to seeing how some of the new ones play on Tuesday. But for now guys, let's get into the games and if you wanna keep up outside of the content, outside of YouTube, outside of the stream, make sure you drop into the Discord server. I think we just hit 700 people, so it's a very active server at the moment and I'd be happy to have you there and speak with you there. So let's get into the games guys and I will see you tomorrow with another video. All right, so next up here we got uh, Double Cross. This feels like one of the matches, though, that is unwinnable for us. Just because we have so many create and plays, and we don't want to play them because they'll take them, and it just, it's feeling really bad, you know, generally. So, we'll try it, though. This feels kind of weak. Ah. We'll just go with Dunka and see how far we can take it here. Like, I think that we could do okay against Double Cross if we go second and then we can push them and try and get out some of their p key plays in round two. But it's the Calviate that prevents me from really being able to push. And then if they take anything in round two, they could play it in round three. And then they have Mushy Truffle carryover and it just gets pretty exhausting. So, um, again... We'll see where it goes here. I think we just put this down. It's kind of out of typical removal range. I don't think I'm going to actually boost it just yet because something like Caress could just pick it up later. I'm going to see if I can get down the Sorceress and not have to use any sort of boost on it. I think that they probably have Attorney Jouster too. It's just a matter of is it in their hand, you know? <clears throat> So that's fine here. We'll just do the Joust test real quick. Everyone's running a very similar deck. It's pretty well like having an open deck list because um, there's been a couple variants going around with the Gwent Opens and I'm sure it was just taken and played. You can already see with the, the one-off Hunter is very typical. It's a pretty scary target for them, right? I want to take Rebuke. At the same time, though. I think we're supposed to take Rebuke, even though we don't have the Symbiosis. Just to get it out of the way. And then we can take Caress here. Just basically go and fly with that a little bit. I don't think I have enough points to take the round with that, but... from them maybe if I can recuperate like everything then it might be worth a push to get rid of some of that stuff um, it's just once they play rune mage they get the perfect leader and we don't want them to take our rune mage we don't want them to take our simlas forest protector is not bad yet because they haven't taken Lydia I think, I feel like that's the best we're going to get. We take that out. Just roommate is scary to pull. I wish there was a way we could flip it or destroy it after we play it. I 
I guess we could do the chain of Sears. I do think that they're holding Joust for it, though. Yeah. If they're going to go and take Rune Mage, it's going to be a slow tempo play. Such good draws here. Let's see if we could fly away a little bit with that. I anticipate that they give it spying, which is why we save the purify for that. You see? Either that or they just take Yennefer's invocation, but. If I boost it, they're more inclined to take Yennefer's invocation. It's not a fun. They take Truffle off that, it gets pretty ugly. At this point, though, I think we take Simlas and just try and crank it. I'm gonna go double Heat Wave, I think, in this situation. Let's play around stuff, you know? I don't want to boost her, though, just because, obviously, like... We'd be purifying it, wasting a point. Deciding there, they take Brathens off of, uh... Ah. It's a curse playing this card against them. Um, at least we have a decent heatwave set up here. That's what we do. We take that. And then... You know, honestly, we go for the 4P. Now they might not have enough time to play it super slow and trying to take something like, uh... Like the Mage, just with the, um... With the Yen, right? Do they play any? Nope. So they have a guaranteed leader, but it doesn't do a whole lot here. Um, even if they take... Actually... Good call on playing that first. I guess they're assuming we have Protector in hand. If they do take leader, it's going to be a problem. If they don't take leader, then I'm going to use the card. Right? 100%. Keep it safe here. I've played this matchup enough times, I've never won it before. Um, so I'm going to include it, like, regardless of the outcome, so you guys can see. Um, played it at peak FF. F uh, at peak MMR, um, as well. FMMR. Um, no luck. And honestly, like, my past attempts, I haven't pushed this hard. So I'm, I'm trying it, and we're seeing. Um, well, we get extra points off the nature. Rebuke's kind of nice because we get the tree in. It's probably the rebuke here off of like a Lydia. And then we can go ahead and use the Hama next. Yeah, we put the Heat Wave back in the deck, I'm sure. And like a short round with Gord could just be very good, you know? Now, if they take a leader, it plays for like five points. Gotcha, gotcha, puppy. That's a, such a good trade. They probably see that rebuke and they're like, ah, oh, here we go. Surely they boost it. I 
I don't think they're going to boost it back. I just think that it prevents them from getting it. You know what I mean? Maybe they take Brathen's Emissary here. Thirty points. Okay, so they take this, they boost this, it gets two procs on assimilate, plus the Brathens. I think I have to play it just to see it. I know they have Yen. Just that's not enough. Right, five, six. They do get some carryover. I'm just glad that obviously location's been spent and Terranova's been spent. Yen's been spent. Like these are the big things. Now it's about keeping last, say, four, five, six, seven. They need ten. If they click, do they get a high roll or low roll? They're trying to decide at this point. There's a lot of bad things for them to click. That's my pass. I'm never going to get another one. Now, if they have Squirrel, we lose. But if they don't, we could win. Like, look. Gord plays for 15 and, and we've got the Heat Wave. Ah. I think we did what we're supposed to do. They saved Brathens. So they have the Brathens and they have the... Uh, Mine. They're gonna tuck that back. Put that back. Do I actually want the sorceress? Is the big question. They have coup. They might open Brathens. I think I still. I think I still take it though. We could somehow pull it off where we play this and this. This is probably Brathens here for something to play. Or an illusionist, right? Squirrel. Take that first. I gotta see Brathens. Nice. I need the order for it. I kind of just wish I had a caress and then this. Like, I don't know if I really want this anymore. Like, cause then I don't know what's a heat wave, you know? Um, I think I should be actually mindful of the fact that there's a problem here. Here, let's try and get the Brathens out now. That's something to play. There, so if they play it, it's emissary. It's not gonna be this, cause they, they have the one turn. That's what I was kind of thinking of. I think we win this game. Oh, they, they don't have Brathens in this deck. Because they would have had it guaranteed. Don't take a rebuke at least, but we this is crazy though. Rune Mage could be a win condition. Rune Mage into like an Alba or into like a rebuke. Of course. Harvest. They damage it? No, they won't. <laughs> By one point? Wow. 
So next up we got uh, Syndicate off the books. It's gonna be like a poison one, I'm sure. I don't think we're too bad in the poison. We got lots of purify, right? Maybe they don't have anything super proactive to play. Sometimes it's the problem with poison. It's just like, what do you play first? If it's all fist techs and traffickers and stuff like that. This is good. It's actually good, but we want to get rid of that. Just, uh, I think we do. Problem is that they can transfer that poison quite effectively. Interesting play though. I think we can tempo past that. That's a weird one to have. Probably just because Salamandra. We'll play this. We'll play this. You know. See how far we can take it. Two point per turn engine's okay. I just don't know if this condition's worth it. Because the fee. And this price. This is probably Shady Vendor. Oh, okay. I don't want to go too tall. In case they start throwing stuff on my side. Rail around one. This just tells me we should keep playing, you know? And it's whenever we play a unit poison it. I don't think we'll have time to play the second Dryad. I don't know if it's worth it either way. It's kind of slow just to sit there for one more turn. Like we want to see commitments. This is kind of a weird card to play. You have so many other cards. Like the Hounds, the Traffickers, the Fist Techs. You've got the... Well, the Failed Experiment would be better than that. Just cram. Still nothing good. Just, yeah. Keep them in. 11 points. They poison out, but... Maybe they're relying on this to complete the poison for this, and they're trying to bluff a pass with this. You have to assume they have a complete poison, though, if they're running a literally a poison deck, but it's not always the case. See? 26 or 2136. I have room to play. On a pass, we take uh, Simlas, otherwise, we probably pass. I know it's hard to give it up though when you have something sitting there with poison. 
no fool. Okay, I think I could take Rune Mage carry over. Yeah, we'll take this on ranged. Just to tell them, like, okay, if you have poison, I want to see the poison, right? They're going to be like, wow, this guy's dumb. And then try to poison it. They gain two points end turn brings them to 50. We gain two points for the next two turns which brings us to 40. So they're... We just need like a 10 point play essentially. Um, I guess they just want to go and take it this way. I'm just fine with passing here. I think we won the battle of provisions. Like I did take a carryover play. They spent the fallen Rayla and the dire hound. And I think that's fine. Right? I wouldn't say it was really expensive for us. A lot of their poison pieces too. This definitely goes... Uh, at this point, I think we just take it like that, and they probably want a long round. Okay, so, just squirrel, I guess. Um, if for whatever reason they can somehow put that back in deck, I don't think they can at this point, but everything else I'm not really concerned about. Just remove it from the game, I'll think about it again. Uh, I need Onero, I want Call, and Protector. Like, those three would just be really good for me. Obviously, it's looking like, um, like Lydia's not... Or Alyssa's not doing what we need in this game. Because I would have taken a heat wave earlier. Like a couple caresses could be a thing. Actually, a couple caresses could be a thing, you know? We take tempering out of the. Yeah. I'm actually not opposed to doing that because we are playing against poison. So I put the caresses back. And then we just play double caress, and we have this from hand, which is probably just better than having, like, you know, one of these three or something. We could pull Heat Wave or Protector. It comes down to if they have, like, a Roland. Which they probably do. I think we'd want to Heat Wave that, but with this leader, it's not as bad. The Heat Wave at Dunka. Okay. Just take. There we go. Uh, I hope there's no Philippa. Junior would feel pretty bad as well. Okay. Stop gurgling like that. We want to kill stuff, don't we? You think they're running double or single? I It looks like Salamander to me, but the Heat Wave plus the Poisons? It's kind of wild. This feels like something I can build up to a Heat Wave that purifies itself. Um, this place for too many points, let's get rid of it. Maybe it's that that goes a bit taller. Maybe it's just that that goes a bit taller. Don't understand the heat wave though. Maybe for scenario play?
if I'm going to be pulling the call, it's going to be for the protector off of harvest, which works. We've got one in grave. Yeah, that's a good play. Triple caress. We'd want them to poison a couple things, though, first. That's gross. Okay, we'll use it this turn then, fine. Um, let's put this back. Sure. That's a question I don't know the answer to. Um, do we take a Purify? Or do we just do something else? It might make more sense to go wider. Yeah, that looks a little better to me. You can have the six because we just get it back. Opposed to just making this like even taller. And plus, it's only the Purify plus three, so it's not a lot of points. And then this just sits like a nice heat wave. We gotta take Protector first, technically. So I don't know if I love the idea. Yeah, because Protector has to go in. Is it the Gore or Protector, though? Oh, they're going wide. What did I miss? Puffball. <laughs> All right, so we, we are taking the triple Simlas here. Um, it just makes more sense. We just have to hope that that's fine. We don't run into more puff balls or something. That was a lot. Is it Gord now? That's the big question. Gord's worth 15. Protector with the Bountiful is not as attractive. Oh wait, we have we have both, or we take Heat Wave. It's going to be offensive, right? Nice. Or now, defensive. Any holiday. Take it. They push it to a nine. Yeah. Something's telling me to heat wave it. They do have renew, but they haven't taken Salamander yet, so it's a little bricked. They wouldn't have had it anyways, guys, because let's say they wiped zero points. You can't wipe Gord, so. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Gord at 15, one off that, 16. Alright, so next up here we got... Gorilla Tactics. We go first. I think it's going to be the control version. Dwarf Elf Hybrid, so we'll get to it. Hopefully we can keep this going. Two of them. At this point, I wouldn't even mind Vile. Tempering feels like something we might use. This is not as important. I don't think two rebukes is important. I think we can use Dunka for points. I think we're supposed to boost the Sorceress. And then if we play Rune Mage first... We have two choices. If they try and do something here, it's not all bad, right? Like, yeah, it stays. Here. Ah, these are all really good things, you know? Like, this is... Uh, actually, nah. This is probably the best. One of these two. Really. 
I do have tempering, so from a synergy perspective, it's this. The elders must put a stop to this rebellion, and then else they will face I still think I'm supposed to take this, right? It's kind of the objective card. And then now we have to give them a choice. Do they want to take away the seer or do they want to take away this? And I think we play it on this row just in case they have a like a bowman so they can't just remove it. They have to actually use leader as well. They might go and take two leader charges here or try and just clean it up. Uh, Dorvin Skirmisher gets good trades though. Swords I smile at, weapons laugh to scorn. All right, so at this point, I have to take the opportunity that presents itself here. We're just going to go and do it. Huge tempo play. If they have Teruvial, then that's a problem. If they don't, well, we're looking at a pretty good pass here. They might have a sensor, though. Nine goes to a one. We have lots of ones. So maybe that's not bad. Part of me wanted to go obviously and rebuke that. I don't know if we're going to get the chance to rebuke it. If they don't put armor on it, we're going to take it. If not, we will. Ah. Uh, it's kind of a big deal. They missed. They didn't use the armor. Nice. 36 12, 24 point lead. Yeah, we'll just pass here. How do I want to play it? Long round sounds terrifying. I just don't see a, much of a play here. Nine, maybe eight, seven. Ah. Deck. Harvest. If I can create one more harvest, we could shovel them back. Maybe that's the play. Let us sing the song of steel. Please work. Please work. Nine. Like, it's so important. If they want to remove it right now, though, it's probably going to be expensive. Three. <sighs> Equal or lower to this base power. So we'd have to boost it. I think I'd be willing to, just for the, the sake of this. Yeah, it's tempo. It's fast, it's fun. <laughs> Here. Damn. It's not what we want. Um, okay, this one. Out of five choices, too. That's the flip that they're going for, right? So they played one of these, and then they played this. So they're going to flip the three if we continue to play. This is going to be the pass now. And then in round three, they rely on the chariot. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. And they only get two instead of three. We played all the sorceresses anyway, so it's fine. Take a sensor. <laughs> Imagine. How many waylay was that? One?
I could put Bountiful back in deck and play three. What else can we get? Or... Well, no. We're taking Gord. So it's going to be that then. Yeah. We'll heat wave this. And then we'll probably take Dunko to kill one of the dwarves if they have chariot. Yeah. It's fine. I don't think we have a good second heat wave. I also think we play fairly decent around the um, sensor if they have one. Okay. Play this for points, we don't lose value. Play this with a... We take one. We don't... I don't think we make this super tall. I think we just keep it alive. They might take Simlas here if they have two. There's that, that's fine. Um, we can get rid of a lot of points if we just take Dunka on that, probably. Call could go into that, and then Onero can go into that. Maybe it's a rebuke off of that. It's probably just the Dunka now. Yeah, so we can rebuke something else. Maybe we bait this out here, just don't touch it. So those leader charges that are really annoying, you know? Like, I don't want to go tall anyways. Um, that's a rebuke. I'm using Onero, yeah. They flip, they get two. They probably have access to Chariot. There's not much else I can do, but maybe crack the armor off these, you know? Here, we'll just take this first. Got the three piece here. I mean, that's a lot of points. Stacked up protector. Actually, that's scary. That is actually terrifying. Because the sensor play. Because we have to play Gord, you know? Um, six. And then... Is there any benefit of using this? Probably not. Two. Uh, one, two, three. Boost itself. Buy one for each elf on rove. That's going to be five. Take this. Gonna take, obviously, this. Like Got to get as many natures as I can played because I'm trying to play around. Uh... All right, they try to go for the snipe. Jeez. Uh, Actually, symbiosis one. Hey. 
If they take sensor, I've got a better... Well, we have it. We have it. And then I just boost this up and use it. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. Uh, let's take this just for the, the swing. Big slam finisher. Let's go. I'm going to take this just because it's fun. I mean, look at how many cards we could recycle that are combo pieces here. It's probably a rebuke we'd normally take, though. Okay. We always have to go first against relics, really. We'll see what we can do here. One, two, three, four, five. This is too greedy to have two. Squirrel might be good. Maybe. But we're going first. We're going to be pressed. I don't really want to play Squirrel. This could be good if they take Resilience or they just have something super tall. We can put it back later. I think in this matchup, we're supposed to do two Heat Waves instead of Heat Wave or instead of uh, the Bountiful's um, Recycle Back. So most of the threats are going to be at six. I think that's all right. Here. Play out a Toad Prince range, and then we'll just try and slap down one, two, three. Carry on here. Now, there's a thought to take this first to see if we can roll one of these to try to carry over one of these. I don't mind. However, if they do take Sabbath or they do take Incubus, they're going to be bringing back Hamadryad. So it's a pretty good trade to just do that and just have it back. <laughs> so aggressive. Okay, they take the whole scope play and uh, all that. So that tells me probably dump double incubus. Hopefully they don't toad prince. I don't want to give that vitality because we're purifying it. Just boom, boom. Ah. And the coin abuse begins. Here. Maybe we'll see what we can get first. I value caress quite a bit. There we go. But do you have two princes? You know. I need to just take off here. I'm gonna lose on even. I might as well get some gourd value. This goes up to eight. I wish I had the rebuke now, because I would have been able to ping clip. Yeah. Um, that's painful. Well, here's the thing. They're pushing off bronze cards, but I still do have reach if I go take Simlas into double bountiful. Or not double bountiful, but double, you know... Double rebukes. Cause yeah, you know what? I think maybe that's the way we have to Rain look at it. Ignorant. Remember to whom you speak. It deals for five. If they don't boost it, it comes out at three. We have a turn to set something up. And then we could take protector. We might just get the pass here, at least we don't lose on even. They might just be content with it. This could be tutoring out a Shiyu nose. I'm thinking potentially Iroquax. Wait, what else would they be deciding on though? Ah, Maxi. Your magic can't harm me. No magic. Two. Four. Uh, Gansian. Shiyu nose on a pass. 30, we wait till it goes up to 5. I think I take this. If it goes to 5, we take Protector. If they play Shiyu Nos, we heat wave the Shiyu Nos. If they play Triss, well, I don't know, you know? I mean, that's, uh, 
That's it, right? Nice. If they play Shu knows now, then we pass. Holy. This is a round three. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if they ever, like, if they even counted or if they just, like, assumed, you know, that it would be enough points. Um. Shu knows brings this over instead of Shu knows. So it's technically supposed to be this for the Rezo. And then we'll put back that with Alyssa. I don't want too long of a round, but I also don't want too short of a round because um, they've got one Incubus set up. Well, technically two. Okay, wait, one, two. Oops, no, 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 no. Uh, they take out one, two, okay. I think shorter rounds actually much better for me. Because look, they're taking out Symbiosis and then a chain of cards that we can work with, you know? Um, they take out this, and then it doesn't necessarily have the order. Hopefully they have no way to bring back Triss. I, I can't think of a way right now. But it is late. <laughs> it's one in the morning, so maybe there's a way. I don't think there's a way for them to bring it back. Um, I do think that I'm supposed to pass. If I play too deep into this here, a lot of the times they take Shu knows if they, they might not have it, but... I'd rather just prepare for it. Most people do run it. I don't necessarily like it as much, but... Oh, that's all they've got. I guess they realize that it's not as effective later on. They want to take away one of these here. That's fine. One less thing to worry about. I think they should have taken maybe the Griffin because the round wasn't that short. is kind of the idea here. Um, Bountifuls from hand, even though we played Simlast, feel great. That's not very great, though. We've got the two. I want to see these. I think we can afford to play... Ah, that's actually worse, but kind of not worse because we don't have any Dryads, right? If they do bring back one of these, then at least we can hit it with something. Okay. Gord last say. It's a big point slam. Uh, what would they squirrel? They probably wouldn't squirrel the heat wave. Do we have any engines, though? That's good. Such a carry, holy. We're playing a special like every turn. If they can't answer this, it's going to be such a big deal. Have they played any crones yet? No. Good. Do they run... Um, they don't usually run uh, an answer to that. Okay. Oh, wow. Now we're talking. I'm going to hit this here. Probably a heat wave that we take. I don't even know if we win, but it's uh, it's a fun game regardless. Um, it's a pity I can never finish. Pull this, I think. Yeah, we'll pull that because we have so many here. 
volatile with magic and dead to one. Rebuke that ASAP or take Waylay? Five. Three. Five. Eight. Waylay. Three. Six. Nine. What's so good about this deck, though, is you could say we're high rolling, but that's the whole point, right? Rune Mage sort of makes that possible. Ah. <laughs> they had enough. They had enough, okay. Um, I want to take this, though, and see if we can get another Bountiful. There we go. Like, all the pulls are just significantly better. Um... I'm going to play this here. Archer plays for good points, actually. Great points. Look at this. Archers off this are really cool. And they help with board management. Cleans it up really nicely there. Alyssa for Heatwave is already looking at 11. Uh, it's got to be Gerda Korra, right? Yeah. Let's see what we can do here. Certainly Heatwave. This will get taller. It's just the three of these are pretty scary. Next turn I'll dish the leader charges here. Um, they're going to have to eat a fruit because they have Sabbath so 2 point per turn boost makes it worth 11 at end game Gord plays for max I think I'm going to play Gord first Just to see if there's something weird we need to heat wave that's taller, you know? Three. So close, guys. 